In April 2025, at an airfield in southern France, thousands of liters of water fell from the sky in a single controlled cascade. The aircraft had swooped low over the runway, opened its belly, and unleashed 20,000 liters onto a simulated blaze, the torrent hitting its mark with precision before the plane climbed back into the spring air. Within minutes, it was back on the ground, its roll-on firefighting kit reloaded and ready for another pass. This was the same aircraft that had once symbolized one of Europe's costliest aerospace failures. Years later, billions over budget and marked by a tragedy after a fatal 2015 crash in Spain, it came close to being canceled altogether. The Airbus A400M Atlas was supposed to be a game changer, capable of carrying armored vehicles across continents, landing on beaches and gravel strips, and refueling fighters in midair. Instead, it became a cautionary tale of political infighting, engineering setbacks, and tragedy. Now, instead of fading into the scrap heap of abandoned military projects, it has become one of the most capable and adaptable airlifters in service anywhere in the world. Its journey from failure to frontline success began long before the firefighting display in France, in a Europe determined to claim its own place in the world of heavy airlift. In the years following the Cold War, Europe's military planners faced an uncomfortable truth. The United States dominated the global heavy lift market with its C-17 Globemaster III, while the C-130 Hercules, although reliable, could not carry the heaviest armored vehicles or operate over intercontinental distances without multiple stops. Europe had no aircraft capable of matching American strategic mobility without relying on American industry. Airbus, together with a coalition of seven partner nations, the United Kingdom, Germany, France, Spain, Belgium, Turkey, and Luxembourg, proposed a solution. And that solution was to come in the form of a four-engine turboprop transport with the payload of a strategic airlifter and the agility of a tactical one. It would fly heavy armored vehicles across continents, land on short, unpaved strips, operate in extremes from Arctic cold to Saharan heat, and refuel fighters mid-air. Yet these ambitions came with built-in challenges. Each nation wanted slightly different specifications. Germany wanted heavy armored transport. The UK pushed for advanced avionics and aerial refueling. And France demanded short field performance. For Airbus, balancing these demands meant splitting assembly work across multiple countries with wings in the UK, fuselage in Spain, tail sections in Germany, and final assembly back in Spain. Each modification had to be coordinated across borders. This ended up slowing progress and increasing costs by a mile. The promise took a lot of boldness, but bold promises are also a lot more likely to collapse. What began as a show of confidence in Europe's aerospace ambitions soon unraveled into a prolonged crisis. The A400M was scheduled for delivery in 2009, but by 2013, the first aircraft were only rolling off the line. Development costs had skyrocketed more than 5 billion euros over budget, drawing sharp criticism in parliaments and defense ministries. Much of the trouble stemmed from the Europrop TP400 D6 engine. The most powerful Western turboprop ever built, it produced more than 11,000 shaft horsepower, but its complexity became a liability. The FADEX software controlling it contained over 275,000 lines of code, four times the complexity of comparable engines. Even minor changes required lengthy civil certification. Production delays had terrible effects. Training programs were postponed. Deployment schedules had to be rewritten. And aging C-130 and Transall fleets had to stay in service far longer than anticipated, increasing operational costs. In early 2010, a government bailout of 1.5 billion euros kept the program alive. But the UK and Germany cut orders, and whispers grew that the A400M might never meet its promised capabilities. The delays also had operational consequences because, for one, NATO planners had to reallocate aircraft for urgent missions while waiting for the A400M. Then, logistic chains began to be stretched thin, and commanders had to improvise solutions for moving tanks and troops, often relying on a patchwork of older aircraft. The program's early struggles made it one of Europe's costliest and most politically charged aerospace projects. The worst was still to come. On the 9th of May 2015, a brand new Airbus A400 lifted off from Seville's San Pablo Airport on its first pre-delivery test flight. Designated MSN-023 and bound for the Turkish Air Force, it carries six highly experienced crew members. Less than three minutes after takeoff, the pilots reported a serious technical fault and requested an immediate return. The aircraft was struggling to climb, its speed dropping rapidly. Witnesses saw the left wing dip before it clipped a power line and crashed into a field, erupting into flames. 
four crew members were killed to survive the severe injuries. Investigators found that during final assembly, a technician had accidentally erased torque calibration data from three of the four engines while updating the FADEX software. Without those parameters, the engines locked at idle power and could not be overridden by the crew. The crash caused all A400Ms to be grounded worldwide. Partner nations demanded answers, and a multinational program monitoring team was set up to oversee Airbus's recovery efforts. For many, it was the moment when the program's survival hung by a thread, and for others, the last straw had already broken the camel's back. This was the moment the A400M's fate was sealed. But for Airbus, it was the point where the fight to save it truly began. The A400M was never a conventional airlifter. Its four reverse-rotating TP400D6 engines each produced more than 11,000 shaft horsepower, driving eight-blade scimitar propellers that allow steep tactical descents and short takeoffs from rough terrain. It can carry 37 tons of payload, enough for a main battle tank, two heavy helicopters, or 160 fully equipped troops. The cargo bay can be reconfigured for medevac, paratroop drops, or helicopter transport. It can refuel fighters in midair and land on beaches, snowfields, or desert strips. The aircraft's fly-by-wire system and advanced avionics made it far more maneuverable than other transports in its weight class. In training exercises, it had performed steep approaches with precision, landing on runways barely longer than a football pitch. This was the machine Airbus had promised. The challenge was proving it could perform reliably in the real world. France was the first to send the A400M into combat operations in 2013, deploying it to Mali in part of Operation Serval against armed insurgents in the Suhel. The aircraft flew long-haul supply runs from mainland France to forward bases, delivering armored vehicles, ammunition, and troops directly onto unpaved airstrips in remote desert regions. Its ability to land heavy payloads close to the front line gave French forces a speed and reach that they had previously lacked. Germany followed in 2015, using the A400M to support NATO operations in Afghanistan. Between 2015 and 2018, it carried everything from humanitarian aid to medical evacuation teams into Kabul and Mazar-e-Sharif, often under tight security and in challenging weather conditions. In 2017, the A400M became a lifeline after Hurricane Irma devastated parts of the Caribbean. The aircraft ferried emergency relief supplies, generators, and water purification equipment from Europe to the islands, often flying round-the-clock rotations. During the COVID-19 pandemic, its cavernous cargo bay was repurposed to transport tons of masks, ventilators, and other critical medical supplies between European capitals. Perhaps its most high-profile mission came in August 2021 during the evacuation of Kabul. As Afghanistan fell to the Taliban, A400Ms from multiple nations joined the largest airlift in modern European history. In some cases, single flights carried more than 250 civilians, with passengers sitting on the cargo floor shoulder to shoulder. Crews operated under immense pressure, flying into hostile airspace while navigating chaotic conditions on the ground. By the time these missions were complete, the conversation around the A400M had begun to change. Flight crews spoke highly of its fuel range, payload capacity, and the ability to operate from rough, short runways. Governments that had once considered cutting their orders now described it as an indispensable part of their airlift capability. The aircraft was finally living up to its design. By 2024, the A400M had grown far beyond the role it was originally built for. No longer just a strategic airlifter, it had become a multi-role platform capable of delivering tanks, helicopters, and artillery pieces to forward positions. It could refuel fast jets, rotary wing aircraft, and even other A400Ms in mid-air. It could deploy paratroopers deep behind enemy lines, transform into a flying hospital with intensive care facilities, or carry out covert special operations insertions in some of the most hostile climates on Earth. That same year, Airbus introduced a groundbreaking firefighting retrofit kit, enabling the aircraft to carry a removable 20-ton water tank without compromising its other missions. The system could be installed or removed in hours, turning a combat airlifter into an aerial firefighter almost on demand. In April 2025, at Nimgaran Air Base, the aircraft proved its new capability in spectacular fashion. Before a crowd of observers, it swooped low over the runway and released a massive cascade of water, reloaded within minutes, and repeated the maneuver as if it was simulating a real wildfire emergency. For Airbus executives, this was more than just another feature. They claimed the A400M had rewritten the rules of military airlift, and for the first time, the statement felt like more than marketing. It had finally become what its designers envisioned, a strategic and tactical airlifter that could adapt to almost any mission. The 
A400M program laid bare the complex realities of multinational defense collaboration. It was a project where engineering blueprints were as dependent on political compromise as they were on aeronautical science. Disagreements between partner governments over specifications, delivery timelines, and budget allocations repeatedly slowed progress. Each nation brought its own military priorities, often at odds with the others, and each change rippled through the production line, adding both months and millions to the schedule. Yet for all its turbulence, the program proved the value of pooling resources, technical expertise, and industrial capacity across borders. French avionics, German engineering precision, Spanish assembly expertise, and British aerospace manufacturing combined into a single machine that no nation could have produced alone at the same scale or pace. The final aircraft was far more than the transport platform. It emerged as a pan-European emblem of determination and compromise, a shared asset that embodied both the frustrations and triumphs of international cooperation. For the partner nations, the A400M became a source of collective pride. It was proof that, despite political and logistical headwinds, Europe could still deliver a next-generation military aircraft on its own terms. The A400M's troubled past was not erased, but it was no longer the whole story. By early 2025, 130 A400M Atlas aircraft had rolled out of the assembly lines in Seville, Spain, and taken their place in the fleets of nations across Europe and beyond. These aircraft now form the backbone of NATO and the European Union air mobility sustaining operations on nearly every continent. They have transported armored vehicles into the Suhel under French Operation Barkhane, delivered critical aid in earthquake zones in Turkey and Morocco within hours of the disaster, and supported frontline deployments in Eastern Europe in response to growing tensions along NATO's eastern flank. Upgrades currently under development are set to transform the A400M from a strategic workhorse into an even more versatile platform. The AI-driven navigation assistance will allow the aircraft to optimize routes dynamically in hostile or contested airspace, while advanced defensive suites will integrate next-generation missile approach warning systems and directional infrared countermeasures. Engineers are also testing radar-absorbing coatings that could significantly reduce the aircraft's signature, giving it a measure of survivability in environments where traditional transports would be highly vulnerable. The A400M Atlas is not simply an aircraft that hauls cargo from point A to point B. Its design allows for low-level tactical flying, rapid reverse thrust landings on short or unprepared strips, and the ability to refuel other aircraft in flight. In the past decade, it has been an indispensable presence in every major European-led mission, whether inserting special forces at night in Mali, evacuating civilians from Kabul during the chaotic withdrawal, or airdropping food and water to stranded populations after natural disasters. Now regarded as a cornerstone of European air power, the A400M has achieved a level of operational maturity that seemed impossible during its troubled early years. It is built to remain in service for decades to come, with an airframe, avionics suite, and mission systems that can evolve to meet operational demands not yet imagined. The aircraft that once hovered on the brink of cancellation has become an indispensable instrument of both military strategy and humanitarian reach, symbolizing Europe's determination to act swiftly, decisively, and independently when the world demands it. The Airbus A400M is a machine built from failure, not in spite of it, but because of it. Its story is a reminder that engineering triumphs are rarely straight lines. Sometimes the only way to create something this capable is to almost lose it first. If you enjoyed this, subscribe now to keep following the incredible stories behind the world's most capable aircraft. Let us know what parts you found most interesting and share this video to show others how far engineering ambition can go.